So we met at Jack Hills, um, which is a mine site in the middle of nowhere. It's about, it's parallel with Shark Bay, but near Newman. In the central Western Australia, near the mining town of Kew. I just started in ad admin there and he was the new electrician who had just started. And so he'd come in and he have to fill in some paperwork and stuff. So he came in into his paperwork and he went into like their meeting room or whatever. And I was like, oh, he's a bit cute. Uh, the first time I seen Erin was when I arrived at site on my first day. She was working in the admin on the mine site. And I had to do a few little inductions and she introduced herself, asked me if I wanted a coffee, and then just kept popping in to see if I needed to help with any of the questions. So anyway, I actually went into the room, or so like leant into the room and I was like, hi, just letting you know that if you need tea or coffee or whatever, it's actually in the room across the lunch room there sort of thing. And um, yeah, cause you know, I needed to have another little look. Obviously uh, she was pretty hot property on the mine site. Um, a lot of guys, not a lot of girls. I kept my distance. I used to go to the pub after work and she would eventually roll in most nights. And when she'd roll in, I would roll out and not give her the opportunity to get to know me. It's the new kid on the block, so to speak. So that got her intrigued. And I guess that was my approach to meeting her properly. We used to run together, so I don't remember exactly how or he would be able to tell you. I used to run after work, and so did she, but usually in opposite directions, not, not out of uh, anything in particular, just that's the route that we used to take. But knock off work and go running um, along the old, like, what we call goat track, which is just like a really dusty, dirt road um, and yeah probably a little bit of flirting and stuff but I wasn't really interested in anyone and neither was he and well I didn't think it was and and she hit me up on Facebook when she found out that I used to run after work on Valentine's Day uh, in 2009 I woke up and there was this red envelope that had been pushed under the door in my donga <laughs> So I was like, I woke up and I'm like, oh, what's that, righto? So I picked it up and I opened it and it was just the card and there was actually nothing written on the card itself. It was just, it just said like something like, guess who be my Valentine uh, from your secret admirer. Uh, I sat in my room that night before I went to bed and thought about what I was going to write in the secret admirer Valentine's Day card that I'd got for Erin. We were friends at that stage. And because she did the pays and worked in admin, she would know my handwriting, so I decided to write nothing. So then I was like, okay, great, who is this from? Because we're on a mine site, right? And there are plenty of other people around and it's Valentine's Day, so someone else could have got the guts to ask me, maybe. Had to make like a tree a couple of occasions and other people were just ducking out of their room for whatever reason. Got to Aaron's room, quietly opened up the screen door. I didn't think too much about the rubbers on the bottom of the doors, but um, I managed to get the envelope in under her door and then um, gave it a push. And it seemed to just felt like it just took off and I thought, geez, I hope I haven't pushed it too far. So I saw him at breakfast. I didn't even look at him because I was like, can't have eye contact because what if it is him? And I was kind of like, I don't know, embarrassed. I said g'day as I normally would. And she looked at me funny. And then all day I had to think about it. And then um, that afternoon or that evening after work, we went for a normal run. And she said, I got a letter this morning. Did you know there's a Jack Hills postman? I went, what? So I just played along for a while and 
acted dumb. And he's like, not helping me at all. And he's like, oh, really? Like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, I had this red envelope that was pushed under my door and I have no idea who it was from. I said, oh, okay, what did the card say? Or who was it from, I said. And she said it didn't say. And I went, oh, that's strange. Well, what did the card say? She said, oh, from your secret admirer. So he's like not helping me or anything. And I was like, well, thanks. It was like a really nice gesture. And then we finished our run. And she was looking at me for more information. And I didn't have it. I didn't give it to her anyway. I had it, obviously. And then he's like, do you want to come back for a drink later? And so I went and had a shower and I came back to his room. On the porch, because my room backed on to pretty much nothing. Just the open space of the Australian outback. We ate dinner on my patio and I had a bit of a surprise planned. So I figured everything would run normally like it did. A few days before, I asked one of the chefs who I'd got to know pretty well through Erin. I asked him to organise some strawberries dipped in chocolate. And we had a drink and then He's like, oh, I'll be back in a minute. And he went into his room and I just thought maybe he was going to the bathroom or something. And he comes out and he's got this little plate with little chocolate drip strawberries uh, and a little like chocolate heart on the top and another card. And on the card it says, if you want to be my Valentine, you have to get in line and take a number and you're number one. And then it opens it up and it says, hope your Valentine's day was full of surprises. And we shared a kiss and pretty much that's how we got together. Like the rest is history really. I took her ring shopping solely just to get an idea of what she liked and what she didn't. From that limited information, I bought a diamond from Solid Gold Diamonds in Perth. Unfortunately, it was already packaged up. I'd purchased it over the phone, so I couldn't actually pick it up. It actually went to the UK for a road show with solid gold diamonds. It's pretty special. So that toured the UK and Scotland and Ireland on a road show. And when it arrived back in Australia, I went and picked it up. No, that was just the diamond. I went across to various states looking for a design that I was chasing. Okay, so how he proposed. So Darren had planned a uh, surprise trip. Um, I didn't know where we were going. I asked him, are we going to be international or into like in Australia? And he, that was all he told me that, yeah, we're going to be in Australia, it's going to be warm. So I was thinking Gold Coast or Broome and I didn't find out until we got to the airport that it was Broome. So we got to Broome and then he arranged for us to go like, you know, camel ride because if you go to Broome, that's what you have to do, go on a camel ride. So. We get there and get on the camel and we're like walking along. There was like maybe 15 other camels and all like couples on all the camels and walking along the beach. And then there's the, like the handlers are all walking along the beach as well next to the camels and they tell you a bit of stuff. And so this guy was there and he's like, oh, do you have any questions about the camels and telling us what they eat and all that. And then once he'd finished talking to us, he moved on to the next um, couple because we were right at the back. So he moves on to the next couple and then keeps walking up. And so we're just cruising along, you know, and he's like breathing really heavy, like, you know, and I'm like, uh, okay, are you okay? Everyone's comfortable. And was like, yeah, this is great. Yeah, loving it, all good. And he looked down and he goes, yo, stop. So the people stopped the camel, made the camel get down. And I'm just standing there watching them like, oblivious to what's going on around me. Your saddle's coming loose. I've got to stop the train. So he yelled out to one of the other handlers. These guys have no idea what they're doing with this camel. You know, they're trying to get it to stand up and fix its saddle. And then some music started. All right, uh, yeah. And she took a couple of steps back and she was watching them and they were fluffing around, lifting up the like blankety things that all the buckles and stuff are under. and. They were mucking around and she's like, these people have no idea what they're doing. What are they doing? And then I turned around and Darren's standing there ready to propose to me. 
Got me phone, hooked it up, press play. John Legend, All of Me. Where the piano starts, I had it full volume. And as soon as the piano started, Erin turned around, heard the music and was like, what's going on? She turned around and just went. And said a little speech and got down on one knee and asked me to marry him. And then the camels like circled around a little bit and we shared a kiss and then I was like, okay, that's uh, unexpected. <laughs> no, not quite like that, but yeah, I was really surprised. I had the box in one hand and I ripped the lid off it, pulled out the, the ring box from inside, opened up the lid, set a bit of a spiel Half the camel train could see what was going on because we were right on the end of the train at the very back. And the other half were oblivious. They were just looking ahead and at the surf, the waves, the sunset and the sand. And, uh, and I proposed to a, a few people's round of applause. We were gonna get back on the camel and then they like started walking away from us. I'm like, okay, where are we going? And the gentleman, there was a guy that was taking photos and he's like, would you like to walk this way? And we started walking on another angle to another part of the beach and there was a picnic that was set up. So we had champagne, caviar and watched the sunset. Yeah, it was pretty special. The owner of the camel train, he was running around with his big lens camera, taking pictures of the whole thing. So uh, yeah, I pre-organised that and then I had arranged for after the proposal and obviously she said yes because we're here in Vegas getting married. Um, the camel train got up, or Fred got up I should say, the, our camel and the whole camel train did a honorary loop, you could say, uh, around us while we were in the middle. Um, obviously, Erin was pretty overwhelmed. She was still thinking there must be something wrong with our saddle and maybe they're gonna put us on a different camel train. <laughs> but no, the, um, the owner of the camel train company said, follow me. And he, we walked over towards the dunes where he had his four wheel drive parked. And Erin was still oblivious. She thought we were hopping in the car and driving back. And on the other side of the car, when we got there, was a blanket laid out uh, with pillows, had coral holding the blanket down. And I had frangipanis just laid out everywhere. Frangipani flowers, that is. And we just sat there, popped the champagne. He took a couple more pictures and then he left it with us. He jumped in the car, he's four wheel drive and said, I'll pick you up after the sun goes down. Enjoy. Love her eyes. Creativity when it comes to doing something romantic. I absolutely love that about him. I love how the the colour changes uh, probably throughout the year. And sometimes they're green, sometimes they're more blue, sometimes they're a combination of the two. I actually really love that he, he, or he, I don't know, he compliments me. He never actually cares how I look. Like, I'll be like, how does this look or whatever, you know, and he, he will compliment me and say, oh, tell me that I look really nice, but um, even if I'm in my pajamas, he'll still give me a compliment and he doesn't, he, you know, he doesn't care. And he also is not fussy about anything. Like I love to cook. So when he's home, I love to cook for both of us, but he'd be happy with toast for dinner. With a little bit of hazel, a little bit of brown in there. Okay. Third one. He, he probably will find this surprising, especially if this goes on your video because um, I actually, I really love that he has really daggy jokes. 
Like when he says things and he starts laughing, I'm just like, oh my God, you're such a knob or whatever, like, you know, but it's a characteristic of his that I, I think I would never want to change. That's it, yeah. He makes me laugh with his crappy jokes. <laughs> The next thing's probably a little bit strange. I love her headstrongness. She follows her will. And the third thing. It's probably a smile. <laughs> you um, can start. Okay, so if I was in the room just before and Darren was telling the story, uh, we'd probably be arguing over the finer details of the story. Like I like to try to keep things short and sweet and Darren likes to be specific to the point where we'll look at the time and I'll say it's 8.30 and he's like, it's 8.27. So yeah, we argue about that sometimes because I'm like, it's just, it, it's a detail that's not that important. That's it. That's me. Your turn. He's all mushy um, now because he just did the... the yeah, no. Nah. But I was. I was a anti-dog hair sort of person. Okay. But. Come on. What else you got? Oh, he does that. Oh, God. So, Darren doesn't like to waste anything. So, if it is old, like a packet of soup or something, like a cup of soup from like 10 years ago, he'll be like, still good. Still good. It's still it's sealed. so bad. And... He, but that's just like that. And then anything else, I'll look at it, it is off. Oh, no, she'll be right. Yeah, it tastes okay. And then they're, he eats it. It's so gross. It's so they're gross. not used by its best before. Best before. <laughs> it's just best before that date. Mm -hmm. okay. After that date, it just doesn't taste So does as that good upset you that I throw it out? Maybe that's why we start arguing because I throw it out and then he wants it. He'll probably go, I actually probably have to hide stuff from you. There's probably stuff I've thrown out and you don't know about because had to hide it from you. Oh, so Darren's last name's Forder. I call him Darren Hoarder because he hoards stuff, lots of stuff. I've never gone through my clothes. Oh yeah, he has more ever, clothes than me. Ever. He has more clothes than me. I've not sure done a salvo run or a good Sammy's or whatever you want to call it. I've never ever, ever gone through my clothes and going, yep, nut, nah, don't wear that. The that only can things go, that, that I think go, I've been able to throw go. out are some old jocks with about 10 holes in them. And even then I have to do it without him knowing. And they're probably my comfiest jocks. And then you're like, oh, so you need them for, run, them for, 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 for runs. Or for, for rags, rags for the car. So they're not getting thrown out. They're getting reused. Mm -hmm. They're recycled. Okay. Yeah, so I'm pretty much out of closet space and definitely out of drawer space. Okay. Five years. Whoa. That's hard. I'd like to say that we're actually in the same house in five years, living in the same house. You see us in five years living in the same house? Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> and um, maybe going on a few more camping trips. Yeah. Uh, new another dog or five <laughs> we live at opposite ends of the country mm -hmm. in our own that's home that's why i said it'd be nice to live in our own home our own home you said the same home the same house yeah the own same home. house ah oh, ah yeah not the same house that erin's actually living in now i got it oh my all right God. so our home i'm actually really looking forward to getting my makeup done by a professional because that's never happened before so that's exciting that's the first thing in the morning I'm really looking forward to having some beautiful photos um, from the day of us two together, which I think is really nice. Um, but they're sort of like after things. And I don't know, wearing my dress, feeling like a princess for the day. Mm. You? And I think the whole, <laughs> the, whole, the whole experience, I think, I'm looking forward to. Just uh, somewhere different. Somewhere just, obviously over the other side of the world, just doing things a bit different to the norm. Yeah, a little bit cliche. Getting married in Vegas. But 
fairly, fairly simple but stylish. We, we can't, can't wait, wait for our wedding, wedding tomorrow! tomorrow!